When we think about silence, we should distinguish between three very different ways that silence can show up in social interaction. First, consider the situation where what we call an adjacency pair is initiated and then the second part of that pair doesn't arrive. So when we say adjacency pair, we talk about pairs such as question-answer. So if Sam asks, did you hear what happened today? And Pat says nothing in response, you know, that that's the second part of that adjacency pair that is missing. Or it could be between strangers. If a stranger asks for uh, directions somewhere and the second stranger answers nothing, that's another instance of the adjacency pair not being completed. And as far as I know, in any uh, society anywhere in the world, I think this indicates uh, some kind of problem or difficulty. It could be that the missing part of the adjacency pair conveys something uh, efficiently, but I think generally this would indicate some kind of lack of smoothness or something not going well in the interaction. Now, I don't want to say that it's always um, considered to be the problem of the person who does not respond. If some stranger speaks to you on the street, you know, in a way, what right did they have to take up your time? So that I, I don't want to um, suggest that it's the fault of the person who failed to respond. But generally, if somebody begins an adjacency pair and the other person does not comply with completing it, it indicates there's some lack of smoothness somewhere. And I think this is, again, as far as I know, universal, which means there is maybe less to discuss here in terms of uh, cultural variation. Now, the other two ways in which silence can show up during a conversation. So you are in an interaction and one person is done with saying their part for the moment. And there is a short pause before the other person says something. So here, this could just be the way that some people have conversations, is to have a bit of a pause there. It can be normal, just unremarkable, so it wouldn't signal or mean anything. It wouldn't signify anything. But if you have people who would normally overlap with each other, then not doing that may signal that there's some difficulty understanding or um, some other kind of social or interactional difficulty may be occurring. And so this is one way that silence shows up where we do have cultural variation, depending on what is the norm among certain uh, people in conversation. The pause may mean something or it may mean nothing. And the third type, maybe people don't have a conversation in the first place. For example, when getting into an elevator or if you walk past someone on the street, if it's an acquaintance or a complete stranger, you could say something, but do you? Here we have variation so that in some contexts and in some cultures, it's normal to not initiate a conversation in the first place. And there are... Uh, I don't think there's a culture where you are required to say something to everyone all the time, but at least in some contexts, it may indicate that there is a difficulty of some kind if people do not initiate some kind of routine interaction. So it's just important to keep in mind which of these three brands of silence we are talking about so that we're on the same page on it.